Tonight, find out how people are supporting Heart Health. And SGA talks about hoop coming events. Stay tuned. Troy Church Vision News starts now. From the High Definition Production Center of Troy University's broadcast and digital network and Troy campuses around the world, this is Troy Trojan Vision News. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision News for February 11th, 2015. I'm Angel Norris. And I'm Jordan Elston. Thank you for joining us this evening. Many people walk to stay healthy and get in better shape. Well, last night, Pike County residents put on their walking shoes to get a little exercise and raise money to fight heart disease. Victoria Bailey has the details. Wednesday night, an entire community gathered together for food, fun, and a great cause. We are having our 2015 Pike County Heart Walk. Um, we're at the Troy Recreation Center and it is a fabulous time. Um, we have um, survivors walking, um, people that just want to come out and support the Heart Association. Um, this is a culmination of our fundraising efforts. The American Heart Association is a well-known, respected organization that helps with research in fighting heart disease. One walker tells us exactly what his walk means to him. Well, I've had three strokes. I have a clogged artery, and my doctor said, walk, good exercise, and keep you out of the graveyard. In addition to community members attending the Heart Walk, Troy University had some representatives as well. One student tells us why it's important to her future to get involved. Basically, we are promoting health throughout um, the United States and that's going to be our career field. So we want to do all that we can to help and promote um, good health among people. Last year, the Pike County Heart Board sent the American Heart Association $36,000 and this year their goal was to double that. I'm Victoria Bailey with Troy Trojan Vision News. If you missed last night's event but would still like to donate to their efforts, you can visit the Pike County Heart Board on Facebook to get more information. A new event for the, for the halftime of Troy University's basketball games where male students will compete for the title of Hoop Coming King is taking place later this week. Last night, SGA discussed the details of this upcoming event. Samantha Kokan explains. Troy University's Student Government Association hosted a meeting to discuss a new event taking place on campus. This year's spring event hosted by Freshman Forum has come to be known as Hoop Coming. Now, what exactly is hoop coming? SGA Vice President George Solis gave us a closer look. Well, actually, this Thursday, so in two days, we'll have our hoop coming, which is like a homecoming version for basketball games. Uh, this is actually being put on by the Freshman Forum, which is the freshman branch of the SGA. It'll be this Thursday at 730, so come and support not only the men's basketball team, uh, but also the Student Government Association in this endeavor. How does one get the title of hoop coming king? For starters, you must be male and come with an empty stomach. So what we're doing is having a halftime eating contest with all the contestants. Each organization uh, was able to put up a nominee for the Hoop Coming All-Star, all males. So we have 17 different organizations represented from all over uh, Troy. The term Hoop Coming comes from the word homecoming. And this event gives male students a chance to earn the prestigious title of Hoop Coming King. The name Hoop Coming because it's on a basketball name instead of a football name. And so I think it's really, I think it's a cute name, Hoop Coming. And then um, so the dad will be pronounced Hoop Coming Teen, like Homecoming Teen. Melton and Solis are expecting a big turnout and both hope to see this become a yearly event. This is the first time and we are hoping this to become a new tradition um, that we're able to host. Yeah, this is actually a brand new thing that uh, some of the freshman forum members wanted to integrate. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it'll be a smooth transition, but I think it'll be a successful event. Hoop Coming will be taking place this Thursday at 7.30 p.m. against rival South Alabama. Samantha Kokan, Troy, Trojan Vision News. The SGA meets every Tuesday at 6.30 in the Hall of Honor. And once again, Hoop Coming will take place this Thursday at 7.30 p.m. in Trojan Arena during the halftime of the men's basketball game against the University of South Alabama. Each week, Troy University students gather to discuss a topic that appears in, in this week's New York Times. That's right, Angel. And this week, students discuss the topic of advancing technology in cars. Shantia Wilson gives us a look. 
Times Talk met Wednesday at noon to discuss the New York Times article on weak security in CAR's wireless systems. The students shared their personal opinions on CAR hacking. Um, it's definitely scary. It's something that's really alarming. Cause, like I have a push start car, so how easy could that be hacked? If it's one of those earlier technologies before we even started thinking about the security involved in any of that, definitely alarming for me. Times Talk discussed the issue of how drivers have started to rely too heavily on new technology, unaware that the information can be obtained through a car's wireless system. Elkis explains her view on the car companies. Since I haven't taken my due diligence to actually read through those policies, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where I stand on that. Like, should I be depending on them, or should there be a created body that governs some of that? As discussed in Time's talk, new technology is available that has allowed Google and various car companies to create a driverless car and allow car-to-car -car communication. Car-to-car -car communication, a little iffy on that, especially if you get some road rage and decide to let some steam out. Um, I can see where it's positive in the event that there's a wreck up ahead and then cars can communicate that back through the traffic and let people know what's going on on the road. Um, so I can see where there's some give and take there. Shane Tia Wilson, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Times Talk takes place every Wednesday at noon in Trojan Center Room 119. All students are invited to attend and free pizza is served to those in attendance. And now taking a look at news from around the state. Birmingham police are investigating the killing of a man in the city's Inglenook area. Police say the man was standing outside a home when a car pulled up and someone inside it fired gunshots yesterday morning. And Limestone County has joined a growing number of places where people are able to text a message to, re to reach 911 emergency services. The director of Limestone County 911 says he wants to remind people that text to 911 should be used as a last option and that a traditional voice call is still recommended. An Alabama woman is facing a disorderly conduct charge after offering to perform a same-sex wedding inside a courthouse. The Otago County Sheriff says Ann Susan DiPrizio of Prattville identified herself as a minister and offered to marry the woman. Still to come on Troy Charge Vision News, the women's basketball team is for higher conference standings. Find out how the team did when Amy Austin joins us in sports. And find out new ways to protect your smartphone. More on that after the break. It's the technology that's making thieves think twice about snatching your cell phone. I'm Chris Van Cleve in New York. That story's coming up. If you store your guns properly, I'll feel safer when I'm playing outside. Safer when walking home. I won't have to tell so many family members. I'm sorry. I won't hear as many scary stories. And I won't have to tell my kids. This isn't a drill. Please. Please, do it for us. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. The warrior spirit, it's in there. Always has been. Now let it out and take the world by fire. Train well and learn what it means to be a Troy Trojan. Walk with confidence, conquer, claim territory, and climb ladders. Know that you have the power to stand alone, but the comfort of knowing that you'll never have to. Discover your inner warrior. Find it at troy.edu slash spirit. Now, the latest in Trojan sports on Troy Trojan Vision News. The women's basketball team is now 8-5 in conference play. The team recently defeated Appalachian State 108-87. Before taking on the Mountaineers, the Trojans fell to number four in the conference rankings. Now after the win over App State, Troy is back in third place. The Trojans are tied for third with Texas State, and associate head coach Jennifer Graff said the team is striving to get higher in the rankings with each game they play. It's huge. Right now we're tied for third, uh, but every every game obviously counts. If We're tied with Texas State right now, but there's still a number of games left. And so, yes, as, as coaches and even the players, you know, they, they look at that, and we obviously want to finish as high as we possibly can. Uh, and so two games at home would be huge. Uh, we'd like to get up there and, and maybe get tied for second and try to sneak up on somebody. Uh, but it's huge. The higher, the, the higher you can get ranked going into that tournament, the better. The Trojans take the court against in-state rival South Alabama tomorrow night in Trojan Arena at 515. 
The men's basketball team completed a three-game road stint over the weekend with the final game against Appalachian State. The team was able to pick up the first two wins in Arlington, Texas and Jonesboro, Arkansas. But after being on the road for the past week, assistant coach Ben Fletcher said the team is glad to be back at home for the next few games. It's, it's great to see Troy, Alabama. Uh, we got in early uh, Sunday morning, a uh, long trip back. But it was good. It was good for our guys to see that. Uh, App State had a great atmosphere. They had about 3,000 in the stands, uh, you know, electric atmosphere. And that's what we want to paint here in Troy. And that's, that's really what we need this weekend. We got two big games coming up, and, and we were just wishing for that, that support to be there this week. The men's basketball team takes on South Alabama tomorrow night in Trojan Arena beginning at 7. The track and field team is preparing for the last tournament before the conference championships. The women's team has competed for, in four other tournaments so far, two of which were in Birmingham where the championship will be held. The team competed over the past weekend at the Middle Tennessee Invitational and the team had a first place finish and several runner ups finishes. And with this past tournament's results, head coach Mark Davis said he is continually trying to get his team to prepare for the upcoming conference championship. The goal was to kind of get prepared for Sun Belt Championship and, and get into a meet where you have to go and beat people and not just try to run fast. You know, um, a championship meets, it's not always about time. A lot of times it's just about beating somebody, and that's what we were trying to get accomplished again. This weekend, the Trojans will be competing in the Sanford Multi and Track and Field Invite. The men's tennis team is now 5-4 on the season after a tough 4-3 loss to Ole Miss. The team is a young team as it consists of 11 players. Of those 11, four are freshmen, three are sophomores, and four are juniors with not a single senior among them. And head coach Scott Kidd said the coaching staff is trying to help the young team keep its focus. Every match we have to be serious, we have to be focused, and I think that's the key with a young team like I have right now is keeping them focused. Um, they are young, some of them are inexperienced, um, but they're fearless, you know. But uh, I think as a group, we have, as a coach staff, we have to really help uh, them maintain their focus in the matches. But one of those players is being recognized in national rankings. Junior Gabriel Diaz was ranked by the Intercollegiate Tennis Association in the top 100. Diaz is currently ranked number 89 in the men's national singles rankings. Diaz is 3-2 and two on the season and only one of two Sunbelt players ranked in the top ITA's top 125. Diaz and the rest of the Trojans will travel to Florida to take on Florida Gulf Coast on Friday.